Good morning, Dreyfus. Welcome to the second day of December. Only three more weeks of school before I go skiing and you guys do whatever you do. <laughs> and I'm Allie Marshall. Cole, you seem to be um, skipping past midterms. But he is right. It is the Christmas season and it is now finally the time to play Christmas music. I've actually already heard enough in November. Welcome to DSOA Today. Speaking of semester exams, the first day of testing will be December 16th through the 21st. There are schedule changes, so please stay up to date. We are also having a college visit by Kansas City Art Institute during lunch in the Media Center on December 8th. Attention seniors, grad bash and senior due payments are due January 27th and are currently listed on School Cash Online. Senior dues are $100 and grad bash is $200. If you are in need of financial assistance, please speak to your guidance counselor about a senior fee waiver. All waivers are due just January 23rd. Please get this done as soon as possible. In other news, juniors and seniors, this will be the last month prom tickets will be sold for $134 on School Cash Online before they will rise in price. Please purchase soon. Also, please enjoy the story on the Good Time Gardening Club. Behind the gym lies a Dreyfus gem, the garden planted by the Gardening Club. Through planting events, harvests, and general meetings, the Gardening Club has left an undeniable impact on Dreyfus. This garden was planted last year, but is regularly watered by the club president, Senior McKenna Senzon. Hi, my name is McKenna Senzon. I am a junior communications major. I started it my freshman year with my sister, who was then a junior. At Dreyfus, there was never a garden before, and so it's something that's really easy to bring to schools, and it can bring a lot of positive impact along with it, so we decided that it would be a good idea to start a garden club and from there we were like we need to start the garden and it took us a while to get that spot but once we got that now the garden is here to stay I hope. The gardening club harvests these crops during club meetings like the ones that took place on November 1st to harvest arugula and beets. Besides this crops include lettuce, tomatoes, beans and more. This club allows gardening pros and amateurs to come together and learn more about gardening through varied experiences. The Gardening Club has really left a green impact on Dreyfus that all communities can enjoy. This Christmas season, Dreyfus Cares is hosting a holiday gift drive for foster kids of all ages. The box is in room 1208 and you can get up to three NHS hours for donating. Half an hour per donation. Just make sure to have a sticky note with your full name, student number, and amount of items donated. The Muse staff has been working on their first issue this year and it's finally here. To access the first issue, you can find it on Direction using the QR code or link here. We are so proud of our Muse staff for creating an issue representing our school. Read up on how rising heat is affecting athletes, our amazing cafeteria staff, an exclusive feature of a visual arts alum, and more. Congratulations Muse staff and attention to all filmmakers. The Film Association is beginning production on this year's collaborative film. If you want to be involved with a film crew from screenwriting to production to editing, you need to attend the informational meeting today at lunch in Ms. Hernandez's room in 1209. There will be a separate meeting at a later date for interested actors. Please email rubyhernandez at palmbeachschools.org with any questions and make sure you have joined the Google Classroom using the code pictured on screen. TechSafe is a series of four videos representing four aspects of online safety and security. Students have automatically been added to a grade-specific Google Classroom titled TechSafe. Their students will, be, uh, will find additional resources and ways to ask questions pertaining to these or any other topic. Here is another TechSafe video. My name is Cameron Kasky. I am 18 years old now. After a horrible tragedy at my school, my friends and I came together to try to change the narrative of school shootings. Our job is to protect our country, and if our elected officials aren't doing it, we have to step up. So we came together and started a movement that was very much mobilized by social media. We were tweeting out a lot, we were using our Instagram to connect with other people and show them our messaging in a really accessible way. We didn't really plan to do a social media-based movement. We planned to do a movement, and we didn't even think about what it was like to base it 
and social media because that's just how we interact with each other. And it was hard. And over the course of the year, we have been harassed online. I received countless death threats. I received very lewd images in my Instagram direct messages. We were attacked like adults, but we were not defended like kids. I have personally said things online that I'm sure I'll look at as an adult and not be very thrilled about. And a lot of us learned a lot about how we interact with each other in social media. There are a lot of things about the Parkland movement that I think are amazing and a lot of things I regret, but one thing I can tell you that is my point of pride after all of this is that people don't remember Parkland as the city that was destroyed. People remember Parkland as the city that was strong and brave enough to stand up and say, we are not going to let you get away with another one of these. The one lesson I wish I had learned before all of this started was that the internet, while it's not real life, is becoming a part of it. It's all about remembering that the social media exists to supplement personal connections and not replace them. Behind every single account on Twitter, unless they're a bot, there's a human being typing. And that person might not realize just who they're interacting with. So you feel like it doesn't mean anything and you feel like the people who see your comments aren't affected by it. We are now a part of this large ocean of connection and it's now our job to be responsible. We need to hold ourselves accountable so somebody else doesn't do it for us. I used to look down on people. I put myself on a pedestal, and I encouraged a lot of my friends to do it as well. I treated people who disagreed with me like they weren't as good human beings as I was. I did a town hall debate at CNN. Emotions were high, and just a week ago, people that I loved were killed. I went up and asked my senator, Marco Rubio, if he would stop taking money from the NRA. Can you tell me right now that you will not accept a single donation from the NRA in the future? And I wish I had stopped it there, but before that, I compared him to the likeness of the shooter for my school. I became part of the problem because I went up there on that debate to make another human being look bad as a human being and not as a politician because I wanted to go up there and embarrass him. I wanted to ruin his career. I did not do that to benefit the conversation. I did not do that to benefit our discourse as human beings. I did that to make another person look bad. I learned a lesson from it and I, I'm, I'm thrilled that we went out there and I'm thrilled that we were able to make this conversation such a national topic. But at the end of the day, I'm never gonna do something like that again. That's where we can stop this. We had counter protesters at all our events who were the same people who were commenting these awful things in our social media posts. When we broke the wall, when we simply just spoke to them and we, we became humans interacting with other humans, things changed. I was in Texas this summer. I, I met a man who came up to me, shook my hand and said, I went after you on Twitter a lot this year. I said some nasty things about you on the internet. But the fact that you're coming up here to this counter protest really taught me something because I didn't know that you kids were interested in approaching this like people. He introduced me to his wife and kids who were all out there protesting us as well. And they said they don't know if they want to do this again because when we came up and connected with them, it changed the way they look at it. That left me floored. And that's why it's so important to look at people who disagree with you like other human beings. When people disagree with you on political issues, you have to remember that approaching them like this is your enemy it's not gonna do anything for you. You have to approach everybody in bitterly social and political situations like they're part of the same world that you are. Approach a bitterly partisan topic, but come from a place where you wanna learn. You learn the most